Hi, friends. I'm Pastor Jack Mantrick, pastor at Century United Methodist Church right here in Waterford, Michigan. This is part of our daily devotions uh, that uh, accompany and are part of our message notes, which uh, are part of our Sunday morning worship. So all of this is uh, meant to uh, elongate the, our experience of worship from Sunday to delve a little deeper into the scripture and the message that is based on the scripture. So today I want to read with you this, this scripture from uh, this past Sunday. It's from John's Gospel, the first chapter, verses 35 to 42. And it talks about the very first disciple, the very first follower of Jesus. The next day, John again was standing. Now that is John the Baptist. I want to make that clear. John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, what are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. And they came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. There we go. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of that holy word. Now, Andrew was a disciple. As I said yesterday, Andrew was a disciple of John the Baptist. But John the Baptist made it very clear that there was one coming after him whose sandals he was unworthy to carry. So John, uh, as he was speaking to a couple of his disciples, one of them, as we learn, is Andrew. We sometimes think the other one was probably John, brother of James, and the other, another two of the 12 uh, disciples of Jesus. It, anyway, they followed Jesus. And Jesus turns around and he says, what are you looking for? <laughs> and it's a great question that we should consider as we think about our faith and our lives. What are we looking for? What do you perceive as your greatest need? What changes would you like to see in your life? <laughs> what changes in your life do you desire? How would you answer Jesus's questions, in other words? What are you looking for? <laughs> Yesterday, I spoke about how John preached repentance, and repentance means to turn around, to turn your life around and head in a different direction. It means just to change direction. And so those times in which we feel ourselves far away from God and heading in the wrong direction, repentance means to turn around and head back toward God, to, to seek God's wisdom, to seek God's peace, to seek God's justice, to discern what it is that we should be doing in order to live a life that is aligned with God's purposes on earth as it is in heaven. To align our lives with God, to be a follower of Jesus the Christ, is an important part of our faith journey. To constantly check ourselves as to where we are going. So, so when I think of um, this question of Jesus, he's, he's deeply challenging uh, them saying, what are you looking for? You know, in Jesus' day, there were rabbis and, uh, you know, people who would go out into the world and preach and uh, uh, they would have following, followings and they would have disciples who would follow them. And often you wanted to know uh, what, uh, what, uh, you, what your rabbi stood for, but that goes, that's a two-way street. You know, what are you looking for? Part of discernment is to quiet yourself, your soul, and to 
wait for the Lord to speak to you, to wait for a moment of clarity, to pray and then listen for God's direction in your life, for opportunities that come to you, sometimes from other people. Sometimes you'll get this sense of what is right in terms of when you meditate and read scripture. Sometimes, uh, you know, I have never experienced this, but some people have experienced a, a fairly clear voice in their head uh, or, or maybe even aloud. I know I've had a couple of those moments in my life. Uh, not, not, not the audible voice, but certainly that clarity. A couple of times, once was, uh, one of them was when I was called to ministry and just said I, I was having a great time freshman in college, a good GPA from high school, looked like things were in the, on the upswing, and I was miserable. I needed uh, to make a change in my life. So I called my pastor and I said, you know, for four years of high school, you kept uh, hounding me to be a pastor, to, to look into being a pastor. And uh, anyway, <laughs> that uh, was a, a great reckon, Nick, reckoning in my mind when I recognized that I really was called to ministry by God and through my pastor and through others who affirmed me throughout the many years of my ministry. So what are you looking for? That's the question that Jesus posed to the disciples, to Andrew and the other disciple. And as you know, they both became uh, uh, disciples of Jesus. And so, it's a good question for us to consider today. What are you looking for? Yesterday I asked you, is the timing right? Is, is your life in, in, seems to be in need of change? Is, 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 is your situation ripe for that change to happen? Do you have clarity today? The question is, do you have clarity on what you're looking for? I want you to think about that. Maybe jot some thoughts down. What would you want your life to look like? in terms of uh, the changes. What are you looking for as you seek to follow Christ, as you seek to do the will of our, our loving Father and Creator? Let's pray. Gracious God, we do thank you uh, that you created us with brains and with uh, talents and with abilities to be your people and to do your will. And we trust and know that you will equip us for that ministry to whatever call you have placed upon our hearts and our lives. Gracious God, we ask for that clarity. We ask for that simple truth to be evident in each of our lives. And we ask it in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Have a great Tuesday, friends, and God bless you.